man, you should have a seat. Oh, that's one of my favorites there. <laughs> Love that song. Um, so, yesterday we had a kind of a special day, and Katie is sitting here in the audience here, and we went to Vita Vu yesterday to uh, celebrate the little life that went on to be with the Lord, and um, we will see that baby again one day. And it was, granted, it was a short life, and unfortunately, Katie was the only one to be able to experience this life, um, because uh, she had a stillborn baby, and just a wee little thing, and um, he's so precious, uh, Caden. And... So we will pray for comfort for her and and that uh, that uh, the, the Lord would just guide her in these hard times ahead that um, <coughs> she'll she'll be okay and she'll get through this. Let's just bow our heads and pray. Father, we uh, we thank you for this day you've given us and and we lift up Katie to you and for comfort and that uh, that you would just. Help her to get through each and every day, and let each day just be a little easier for her. And uh, and 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 we just know that we'll we'll see Caden again. Um, Father, I pray for a little a, a little seventeen year old who died um, by her own hand here just just this uh, just a, a day or a few days ago or. Um, Friday. Friday. And uh, pray for her family, that you would just comfort them and lift them up and, and help them to get through this troubling time. And um, Death is always a hard time, but when it's, when it's a suicide, it's even worse for the families to deal with. And we just pray that, that you would comfort them and, uh, and help them to get through this. And, and everyone who is, is attached to this family... That, that may struggle. I just pray that you'd help them to get through that. I pray for Rhonda and safe travels and uh, Denny and Dot for health, their health issues and, and pray that you would continue to work with them and we see them every Wednesday here and I just pray that that would continue and, and uh, uh, pray that you continue to bless them and, and just and help them to, uh, to, to through the, their, their health struggles and you know they're just they're just getting older and bodies are not as strong and healthy as they used to be and we just pray for the, the pain and the and the, the, the deterioration to um, for your the, your comfort in that Michael Ann fractured her ribs and um, she had a fall and pray for for healing with her and she's always been real healthy and and she wants to stay healthy, and I just pray that you would heal her and 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 the, and help with the pain. And I know that's a very painful thing, and uh, I just pray that you would get her through that. And I pray for Jay, uh, Lord, and you know what the situation is here with that. And I just pray for for you to uh, touch him in a way that only you can, and the only way that uh, that, that would help him <clears throat> through the, the the times that he's having. I pray for Rod's mom for health and for safe travels that uh, she would return home safely and we just love her and um, we, we, uh, we thank you for uh, all your many blessings and the, and the prayers that you answer immediately and for the prayers that you say wait and you answer later on and we know that your perfect will be done here and we just ask that your perfect will be done Lord. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. <coughs> <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Cross Team Cowboy Ministries. Hi, Wendy. <laughs> She's been listening. So I had to say that. <laughs> So to, this morning we're going to be uh, in Genesis chapter 24. Um, Genesis chapter 24. If you need a Bible, the, the, the Old West Saloon has Bibles in it over there on the table. And grab, feel free to grab a Bible and, 
And you can keep it if you want it. You can keep it, take it home, and read it. Um, if you take it, you have to read it, though. That's, that's the stipulation. So. <laughs> so Genesis 24. It's the very first book in the Bible. And we're in the 24th chapter of that book. Now Abraham was old, advanced in age, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in every way. Abraham said to his servant, the, old, the oldest of his household, who had charge of all that he owned, perhaps, or please, place your hand under my thigh, and I will make you swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of earth, that you shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, among whom I live. But you will go to my country and to my relatives and take a wife for my son Isaac. So what a beautiful spiritual application we see here. And I'm going to explain that a little bit. So remember how Abraham is a type of the father. And Isaac is a type of the son. Eleazar, which this unnamed servant, and we see earlier in, in, the, in the chapters, that Eleazar is this servant that we're talking about here. And he is a type of the Holy Spirit. Um, because the Holy Spirit is always the unnamed servant. And right here he's represented by the unnamed servant that's going to go and find a wife for Isaac. And then Sarah being a type of Israel. So here we have the Father sending the Holy Spirit to find a bride for his son. And only after Sarah has died that this is taking place. Now if you take Sarah being a type of Israel. So Israel is no longer in the limelight, so to speak. And, and so we're going to get a bride for, the, for, the, for, for, the, for Isaac or Christ. So we, being the, the bride of Christ, Israel is kind of on the back burner right now. God's not dealing with Israel at this time. He will deal with Israel again in the last seven days or the last seven years, um, the last week of Daniel's prophecy the, of the uh, um, of the weeks of years and all that. We, we'll get into that later. But, so Israel um, is not in, in, in play right now, and um, this is just a beautiful picture of, of the Holy Spirit gathering His bride for the Christ, for, for God. Um, So let's move on here to verse 5. And the servant said to him, Suppose the woman is not willing to follow me to this land. Should I take your son back to the land from where you came? Then Abraham said to him, Beware that you do not take my son back. And notice, notice here that the son is not to go back. Right? The bride is to be brought to the son. Christ is not coming back for his bride here, he's going to come in the clouds and meet his bride, and so this is another picture of of what we're going to what we what we know as the rapture, um, the taking away of the bride. He's going to the Holy Spirit's going to gather the bride, and we're going to be caught up in the clouds, and we're going to be we're going to meet the Lord in the air. But Jesus is not coming back until he has his bride. And uh, Christ is not coming back until after the bride is brought to him and we have the marriage supper of the Lamb. And then we're all coming back with him. Okay, so verse 7. And so that's the, that's the spiritual the picture here that's just so brilliant in, in the Old Testament. And it's, it's the gospel written in Genesis, the very first chapter of the book. Our very first book of the, of the Bible. Uh, verse 7, the Lord, the God of heaven, who took me from my father's house and from the land of my birth, and who spoke to me and who swore to me, saying, To your descendants I will give this land. He will send his angel before you, and you will take a wife for my son there. But if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be free from this my oath. Only do not take my son back there. 
Again, he reiterates, he reiterates, do not take my son back there. <coughs> so the servant placed his hand under the thigh of Abraham, his master, and swore to him concerning this matter. And this was a serious matter. He swore to the God, the only God of heaven and earth, the Lord, Yahweh, Jehovah, that he would go find a bride for Isaac, and bring this bride back. And now, if the bride chooses not to come, then he's relieved of this oath, and he doesn't have to fulfill it. So it's the bride's choice to come with Isaac, with this uh, um, servant or not. In verse 10, Then the servant took ten camels from the camels of his master, and set out with a variety of good things of his master's in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, to the nearest to the city of Nahor. He made the camels kneel down beside the city by the well of the water at evening time, the time when women go out to draw water. And he said, O oh Lord, so he prays. This is a really neat prayer that he prays. O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, please grant me success today and show loving kindness to my master Abraham. Behold, I am standing by the spring and the daughters of the men of the city are coming out to draw water. Verse 14 says, Now may it be that the girl to whom I say, Please let down your jar so that I may drink, and who answers, Drink, and I will water your camels also. May she be the one whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. And by this I will know that you have shown loving kindness to my master. Before he had finished speaking, behold. Now, this is amazing, right? So let's stop here for a second. First of all, Isaac, or this, this Eleazar, the, the servant, he is throwing a fleece out, per se. We see what a fleece is. He's kind of testing God, saying, if this is who you want, then do this. And so he's, he's sending a fleece out. Um, and it's interesting Well, let's, let's move on. I'll get to that in a second. <laughs> My thoughts here. Okay. So, <laughs> so he throws the fleece out, and he prays to himself. He doesn't have to pray out loud. We can pray out loud, but, you know, sometimes we just pray in our spirit. We just, under our breath or into ourselves, we pray to God. And you know what? He hears us. Because he answered this prayer before he even was finished praying it. He had a specific request. He said, do... I'm going to say this, and she's going to say this, and if it's going to be this specific in order for this to be the right person. So he was very specific in how he prayed and what he prayed for. And also he trusted that God has already appointed a bride for Isaac, you know. He said, whom you have appointed for your servant Isaac. So he just wants God to show him this person that he's already appointed for Isaac. So he's already received the promise of God. And then prayer was answered immediately. Sometimes, sometimes when we pray, God answers our prayers immediately. And so many times he does this. If we're praying in God's will, a lot of times he will answer our prayers immediately before we even finish praying them. But not all the time. Sometimes he, he waits and we don't get our prayers right away. But there's a lot of times where we do. We get our prayers all immediately. And <laughs> I use this a lot. Um, I'm a mechanic. And I'll drop a bolt or a nut or a something really small. And it'll go bling, and be gone. And I'll look and I'll look and I'll look. And I usually pray that God would find it for me. And I'll tell you what. He answers that prayer a lot. Because right after I pray, a lot of times... More times than not, he points me in the right direction. I find the bolt or the nut or the tool or whatever that I find. Sometimes I don't ever find it. And it goes into the backside of the moon where all the socks are yes. <laughs> from your dryer. Um, so that's, that happens too. But most of the time, he answers my prayer immediately on that. And so that's just a neat little illustration as to what happens there. So um, verse 15 before he had finished speaking, behold, Rebekah, 
who was born to Bethuel, the son of Milcah, the wife of Abraham's brother Nahor, came out with her jar on her shoulder. And the girl was very beautiful, a virgin, and no man had 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 relations with her. And she went down to the spring and filled her jar and came up. Then the servant ran to meet her and said, Please, let me drink a little of a little water from your jar. And she said, remember the prayer, Drink, my lord. And she quickly lowered her jar to her hand and gave him a drink. Now, when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw also for your camels. Remember the prayer? He specifically asked that, hey, after she gives me a drink, that she's going <clears> to <throat> give drink to my ten camels that drink a lot of water. That's a lot of jars filled up to feed water all these camels. So it's going to take one special lady to be willing to do this. So I will draw also for your camels until they have finished drinking. So she quickly emptied her jar into the trough and ran back to the well to draw, and she drew for all his camels. Meanwhile, the man was gazing at her in silence. So just picture this. Just stop here for a second. Just picture this. Here's this beautiful woman. He had just prayed, and she's doing exactly what he prayed. And he's like, wow. It was amazing. Have you ever been in a situation where you prayed and God has answered that prayer and you're like, God, you are so good. <laughs> How amazing are you? So the man was gazing at her in silence to know whether the Lord had made his journey successful or not. When the camels had finished drinking, the man took a gold ring weighing half a shekel and two bracelets for her wrists weighing ten shekels of gold. Now that's a lot of gold. And said, Whose daughter are you? Please tell me, is there room for us to lodge in your father's house? So she said to him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, whom she bore to Nahor. Again, she said to him, We have plenty of, of broths, uh, both straw and feed, and room to lodge in. Then the man bowed low and worshipped the Lord. So now he's like, oh, praise the Lord. You answered my prayer this fast. And she actually is a relative. So he's, she's a relative of his master. And, and she did exactly what he prayed for in the prayer. And if you, if you know when you're in God's will, and it looks like this, it is such a good feeling to know that you are right down the middle of God's will. And He is at this point. So he worshipped the Lord, and the Lord answered his prayer. He worshipped immediately. And so we need to be thankful to God at all times. Because this is an example. He worshipped God immediately. He didn't wait until he got back to tell the story. He worshipped Him right then and there. He didn't know this girl. He didn't know what her relationship was with God. But he didn't care. He knelt down and he worshiped God immediately. And he said, verse 27, he said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his loving kindness and his truth toward my master. As for me, the Lord has guided me in the way to the house of my master's brothers. And I like the King James version of this a little better. Um, you miss what he's actually saying here in the New American Standard Version. But in the King James Version, it's, it says like this. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I, being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. And then if you read the King James, a lot of times there'll be an italicized word. And that's a word that they just kind of threw in there to make it flow a little smoother if the King James can be smooth. They did that to make it a little smoother. But the real, the Hebrew rendition of this is, is of um, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I in the way, or in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brother. In the way, the Lord led me. He was in the way. I was in the way. See how that is? He was in the way. He was in the will of God. And during this process of being in the will, 
the Lord led him to his master's brethren. So he had to be in God's will in order for God to bless him and put him in the right place. If, if you know what God's will is, and God says, hey, I need you to do this, and you're like, well, why? <laughs> why should I go to this place? And you don't ever go and say, well, you know, let me ask all my friends and see if they get the same thing. Let me talk to the wife and see if she gets the same thing. And let me talk to my pastor and see if he gets the same thing. And let me talk to some other people because I really don't want to go. And you didn't tell me why. So you're just waiting and waiting and waiting. But until you actually go out and you step out in faith and you do God's will, will he bless you and you'll know that you're in, in God's will. So back in... Uh, oh around 2000, 99, 2000, sometime in there. We were living in um, in uh, Overland, Kansas. And I had just got fired from a job in Norton, Newton, Newton, Kansas. And, uh, or Norton, Norton, Kansas, I can't even remember because it's not that important to the story. What's important to the story is I had this feeling that we needed to go to Bible school in LaGrange, Wyoming. We had $100 and a tank full of gas. So we drove, oh, and this was Christmas Eve, by the way. So <laughs> we had called the registrar up and somehow got through, and she says, yeah, come on in. I'll meet you tomorrow, which is Christmas Day. And I'll meet you tomorrow, and I'll show you the school. So we get up there, and we drive with a tank of gas and $100, and we, we um, get to LaGrange, the next day is Christmas Day, or the next day was Christmas Eve, I can't remember which. But she met us on a holiday. We toured the school. We got enrolled. I, we went across the street and ate at a restaurant. I didn't, we didn't have a place to live. We didn't have a, a job. On the way up there, I was calling around some places that, <coughs> that I knew to call for a house. We got a, a, a house rented on the way to LaGrange. And when we ate in the restaurant, I got a job down the street of a mechanic that was eating in the restaurant that needed a, a, an employee at the time, and I got a job. All because we were in the way. And so, it's just amazing what God will do if you're in the way. And verse 28 says, Then the girl ran and told her mother's household about these things. Now she ran. Now Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban, and Laban ran outside to, to the man at the spring. When he saw the ring and the bracelets on his sister's wrists, and when he heard the words of Rebecca, his sister, saying, This is what the man said to me, he went to the man, and behold, he was standing by the camels at the spring. And he said, Come in, blessed of the Lord. Why do you stand outside, since I have prepared the house and a place for the camels? So the man entered the house, then Laban unloaded the camels, and he gave straw and feed to the camels, and water to wash his feet, and the feet of the men who were with him. So, we see Laban later on. He's a real character. He's a real greedy character, okay? Laban is Rachel's brother, and we will see him later in the story. But right now, Laban is dumbfounded by the wealth that this guy shows, um, after all, his sister come in with a lot of gold. And this stranger's standing outside. And he has no clue who this guy is. He just knows that he's got ten camels full of wealth. And he's here, and he just gave Rachel basically a dowry to be married. All right? So Laban's kind of excited. He's going to get rich off his sister. <coughs> So, nonetheless, Laban still shows hospitality. But for what reason? So, was it just to see if he could, what he could get into return? Or was it to see what he could get in return? So, we've got to be careful to do things for the right reasons. Not to just do something so you could get something in return. So, I was um, pouring concrete for... And when I started working for Kroll... 
the guys would say, oh yeah, if you help out, you know, the, 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 the guys pouring the concrete, a lot of times they'll give you a tip. You know how many times I got a tip for helping them pour concrete? <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Was it because I kind of wanted a tip, so I worked hard, and I never got one? I don't know. Maybe. Um, but you got to be careful what your motives are in, in when you're helping someone. So whether his motives were pure or not, we don't know. Verse 33 says, But when food was set before him to eat, he said, I will not eat until I have told my business. And he said, Speak on. So he said, I am Abraham's servant. Now, remember, God had changed Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham and Sarah's name from Sarai to Sarah. Did word get back to the family that the name has changed? Or is he still speaking a, a, a mystery to this Laban here? Does he know that these are his relatives yet? We don't know, and it doesn't really say, but I just that just kind of come to me last night. I'm like, I don't know, the names kind of sound like, you know, Uncle Abraham, or Abram, and Aunt Sarai, but maybe this is, maybe this isn't. I don't know, I haven't heard from them for years, so we'll see. Let's see what the story says. So, verse 35 the Lord, Yahweh, has greatly blessed my master so that he has become rich. And he has given him flocks and herds and silver and gold and servants and maids and camels and donkeys. Now Sarah, my master's wife, bore a son to my master in her old age, and he has given him all that he has. My master has made me swear, saying, You shall not take a wife for my son from the daughters of the Canaanites, who, uh, in whose land I live. But you shall go to my father's house and to my relatives and take a wife for my son. And I think right now is when Laban goes, ding! Ooh, this is, this is my uncle, uncle Abraham. And I said to my master, suppose the woman does not follow me. He said to me, the Lord, Yahweh, before whom I have walked, will send his angel with you to make your journey successful. And you will take a wife for my son, from my relatives, and from my father's house. Verse 41 says, Then you will be free from my oath. And he's just reiterating everything that Abraham has told him. And we're just going to go through this again. When you, Then you will be free from my oath when you come to my relatives. And if they do not give her to you, you will be free from my oath. So I came today to the spring and said, O oh Lord, the God of my master Abraham, if now you will make my journey on which I go successful, behold, I am standing by the spring. And now he's reiterating the prayer that he's, he's, he prayed. And may it be that the maiden who comes out to draw and to whom I say, please let me drink a little water from your jar. And she will say to me, you drink and I will draw for your camels also. Then... Her be the woman whom the Lord has appointed for my master's son. Before I had finished speaking in my heart, behold, Rebekah came out with her jar on her shoulder and went down to the spring and drew it. And I said to her, Please let me drink. She quickly lowered her jar from her shoulder and said, Drink, and I will water your camels also. So I drank, and she watered the camels also. Then I asked her and said, Whose daughter are you? And she said, The daughter of Bethuel, Nahor's son, whom Milcah bore to him. And I put the ring on her nose and the bracelets on her wrist, and I bowed low and worshipped the Lord and blessed the Lord and the Lord, the Yahweh, and the God of my master Abraham, who had guided me in the right way to take the daughter of my master's kinsman for her son. Verse 49. So now... If you are going to deal kindly and truly with my master, tell me, and if not, let me know, that I may turn to the right hand or the left. Then Laban and Bethuel replied, The matter comes from the Lord, the Lord Yahweh here. So we cannot speak to you bad or good. Here is Rebekah for you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son as Yahweh has spoken. Now realize this. 
they now realize that this is all coming from God, the one true God of heaven and earth. So, if you remember, these people are pagans. They are idol worshippers. And we see later, as Laban, um, uh, <clears throat> Laban's daughter steals the idols of his household and hides them under her in the tent, and Laban was going to kill whoever had the idols, they was and still are idol worshippers. Laban and his family are idol worshippers. Abraham was called from this people, these pagan people, of idol worshippers. He was called out of the Gentiles. Remember, Abraham was the first Gentile. The first Jewish converted Gentile. <laughs> I guess you could say that. So even so, they, know, they now know that this is really the one true God that's dealing with this servant. And they're dealing with God himself. So in verse 52, when Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed himself to the ground before the Lord. The servant brought out articles of silver and articles of gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious things to her brother and to her mother. Then he and the men who were with him ate and drank and spent the night. Now, remember, he, he bowed down and he worshiped the Lord again, right in front of all these pagans. He didn't care what they thought of him. He bowed down and he worshiped the one true God. And then he gave them gifts. He gave Rebecca gifts. He had ten camels worth of gifts. And he gave the family gifts. <laughs> and notice it wasn't until the bride-to-be accepted the offer to wed the son that the servant gave gifts. So the Spirit gives us gifts when we decide, we make a decision to trust in the Lord and become His bride. The Spirit gives us gifts. Eleazar gives us gifts, so to speak. Um, when we trust in the Lord as our Savior and we inherit streets of gold, and the gates of pearl and jewels that light up the sky, we inherit all this. Just like Rebecca is going to inherit all the things of Abraham, all his wealth, she inherits all this. Laban and his family, they get some gifts because they're overflow, but they don't get the gifts. Rebecca gets the gifts. So when they arose in the morning, he said, Send me away to my master. In verse 55, but her brother and her mother said, Let the girl stay with us a few days, say ten. <laughs> Afterwards she may go. And he said to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has promised my way. Send me away, that I may go to my master. And they said, We will call the girl and consult her wishes. In verse 58, Then they called Rebekah and said to her, Will you go with this man? And she said, I will go. So she, just, she had the choice. The servant wasn't going to drag her to the son. The servant is just to persuade or to lead the way, which the servant doesn't drag the bride. The bride chooses the master. The bride chooses the son. The bride of Christ chooses Christ. He doesn't drag us to heaven. He doesn't drag us... There's not going to be anybody in heaven that's not going to feel at home there. If you're not going to feel at home in heaven, you're not going. Okay? So 59, verse 59. Thus they sent away their sister Rebekah and her nurse with Abraham's servant and his men. They blessed Rebekah and said to her, May you, our sister, become thousands of ten thousands. And I think this is a prophecy. These pagans just prophesied. Because her seed will be as the stars of the sky, the sand of the sea. And may your descendants possess the gate of those who hate them. And is that true today? They possess this land, and outside of this land, everybody hates Israel. Then Rebekah rose with her maids, and they mounted the camels and followed the man... So the servant took Rebekah and departed. Now Isaac had come from going to Beer Laroi, 
Bir Laharoi, for he was living in the Negev, or the south country. And Isaac went out to meditate in the field toward evening. And the story hasn't talked about Isaac a whole lot up until this point. And I think it's remarkable that, uh, that he went out to meditate. This was his custom, to meditate in the field. So it looks like he was a godly man. And also, he trusted in the, in wholeheartedly in his father. A, a few chapters back, when when uh, when the when God was when said when God said, sacrifice um, your son on the altar. Isaac, being an adult, said okay, and he went along with it, trusting in the Lord that he would be raised from the dead as well. So he was also. <clears throat> Uh, very trusting there, but that's really all we see of Isaac up until this point. From the time that he was going to be sacrificed until he meets his bride, we no longer see him. He's kind of out of the picture. And we're dealing with Eleazar, the servant, finding the bride. And so that's kind of a spiritual picture of Christ is not here. He is there preparing a place for the bride. The Spirit is here preparing the bride. So that when we meet him in the clouds, it's because the father says, Okay, son, go get your bride. And he says, Come on up here. And he meets us in the clouds, and we have this marriage supper of the Lamb with him. And that's going to be very, very amazing. And this is in Genesis. Genesis is the foundation of all Scripture. Everything that we see later on in Scripture is found first here in Genesis. And I think it's so amazing. So when he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, camels were coming. Rebecca lifted her eyes, and when, he, and when she saw Isaac, she dismounted from the camel. She said to the servant, Who is this man walking in the field to meet us? And the servant said, He is my master. Then she took her veil and covered herself. The servant told Isaac all the things that he had done. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent. And he took Rebekah, and she became his wife, and he loved her. Thus Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. So, and that, that concludes this, where we're at here in the story. But I just think it's interesting. So she sees this man coming to meet her. Never met him in her life. And she bails off the camel, and camels are pretty tall, and she just, she bails, right? She's going to meet this guy. Oh, wait, by the way, who's this guy? <laughs> you know, that's the guy, that's the guy. So I'm sure this whole way back, Eleazar is telling Sarah all about her, his master. And she's fallen in love with this guy before she even meets him, right? See, the Spirit tells us all about Jesus. And we love him, and we've never seen him. But when we see him, we're going to be excited. We're going to bail off our camels. And we're going to meet him in the sky, right? We're going to bail out of this place, and we're going to meet him. And he's going to meet us, and he's going to take his bride, and we're going to live forever with him. And that's such a beautiful picture here of, of this whole thing. And uh, it's just amazing to me that this is all prophecy of what's going to happen in the future. Okay? You, we can't make this up. You, you just can't make this stuff up. It's, it's amazing. You can't tell me that a bunch of people got together and wrote this book to make it come together like this. It's just too much. Too much is part of this. There is a God, and He sent His Son, and He died for us so that we might meet Him in the air one day, and that we might be in glory with Him forevermore. And that's exciting to me. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your son, for giving him to us, and for allowing us to make a decision to choose him. It is our choice, and we understand that, that it is our choice. And I just and I know that you you say that you would not have that anyone would perish, that but all would come to you, and all would would trust in you and, and believe in you. And I, that's my prayer for all of us here today, that if there's anyone here that doesn't trust in you as their Savior, that, that you would work in their heart, that they would come to know you, and that they would just 
turn from their sins and just acknowledge you and, and love you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the Lord watch over you and prosper you as you walk in his ways and may you all be blessed throughout the week. In Jesus' name, in Yeshua's mighty name, amen. amen.